Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwyn, and the Insider Crew. So welcome back, everyone. Episode 84. We're back in PCA's national headquarters. Y'all have been on the road at Rensport. Uh, I have serious FOMO. Uh, I missed out on a lot, but I needed to stay to take care of a couple of things. But uh, we have around the table, of course, Manny and Damon are here. And I think this is the first time we've ever had a guest uh, back to back. Because Richard, you were on the last episode and you're back here to take care of some administrative stuff with uh with staff here so you're back at headquarters so uh richard strahota pca's national treasurer welcome to the podcast at hq thank you good to be here but you must really be hard up if i'm here back to back. <laughs> no, you just we, you we, just happen to be in the building <laughs> no, we have an ulterior purpose because you could you uh take care of the treasury thus the budget <laughs> many many uh, wanted so you answer. first thing you complained about was how creaky the chairs were yeah it does and how move. small the table was <laughs> so you'll understand this and be our champion when we ask for a lot more money <laughs> yeah, and exactly. the budget and for a bigger I, budget there's no air conditioning either. oh no don't you no, feel no. like you're <laughs> under a heat lamp at I uh <laughs> if, i always say it feels like i'm having the the podcast in my suburban i'm used to arizona weather but this is hot <laughs> well first off let me just thank um, the HQ staff, the executive council, all the hundreds of volunteers. Um, and, and Robert, I know, was also on the road, and we always talk about him being uh, behind the scenes. But thank you all for taking such good care and representing PCA at Rensport. Yeah, it was fun. Yes, it was uh, an experience. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of experiences, um, do you know who Dr. Julio Palma Palma is? Anybody? Anyone? No, makes, not making the bell. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> yes. He's yes. a great Porsche collector. He is a, I believe, a wine connoisseur, but he's also the creator of the stent. Did you know that, Manny? Oh, really? I, did, uh, I always thought that. I thought that's where the Cook family got their money from. I think they make stents, but uh, I don't think they created okay. the stent. So um, I'm especially thankful for uh, Dr. Palma for creating and those people that produce the stent because that's the reason why I wasn't at Rensport. Um, thank you for all the well wishes. I know it kind of took people by surprise why I wasn't at Rensport. Um, but the Friday before I was supposed to uh, get on the plane to head out for 10 days, I kind of noticed things weren't right. And uh, thankfully, I listened to my body and I was able to get appointments. And long story short, uh, I thought I was going in for a stress well, test. I don't think you can yada, yada, yada for the story <laughs> because these <laughs> listeners have been uh, waiting two weeks. I've told them I'm going to let you tell the story. Okay, so okay, all right. Get so, into your more in-depth. Of okay. Exactly. Hey, let's even back up to the Thursday before the Friday. We were in the office all together, and you were telling us how you thought you were allergic to your daughter's dog, and your daughter just came back from college. Yeah. And so we're thinking, yes, you are probably allergic because uh, you were out of breath. And uh, when I was allergic to a cat, I was like that too, but I, I was actually allergic. All right, so I'll rewind a bit. Um, so I don't, I di don't and didn't have any um, – I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have – high cholesterol. Um, I have no family history of heart issues. Um, but just, just a love for fried chicken. <laughs> just a love for, <laughs> for double fried chicken. Um, so anyways, I wasn't feeling that great for the past couple of months. I, I play a lot of pickleball, and I kind of know my limits of how many games I can play. I can play two, three hours typically with no problem. And the past couple of weeks before Ren Sport, I noticed I was getting tired more quickly and um the the monday before i was supposed to leave for ren sport um unfortunately a friend passed away so i was like kind of on alert you know how when someone you know someone close to you pass away and then i went to play pickleball that that evening and uh, i won my first game and typically the first game you stay on the court and you play the next people that come on and I was like, you know what? I want to sit down. And I was playing with my brother, and he was like, "Are you okay? Like, you don't normally step off if you win." And I'm like, "No, no. I think I want to conserve my energy." He's like, "You feeling okay?" And and so, anyways, I I, I I stayed. I played the second game, 
And um, I, my brother was like, "You're why are you like walking to the ball?" I'm like, "Well, because I'm conserving my energy. I want to make sure I play hard." <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyways, I finished the second game. And after two games, you step off the court, and I'm talking with my friends. They're they're like, you know, my brother was again saying. You know, it's, it's noticing I was kind of different, and I was talking to my friends. I'm like, ah, eh, you know, I just kind of pain is too strong of a word. I had like a discomfort, and I just felt tired. And of course, my my friends were just like, mm, you probably want to get that checked out. So combined with you know losing a friend earlier in the morning, that happening, you know, I was like, you know, before I go to run sport, maybe I should go get checked out. So Tuesday. I call my primary care. Thankfully, I got in right away and, you know, did my EKG and, you know, blood pressure. And, you know, blood pressure was a little high. EKG looked fairly normal. I didn't have, I wasn't tired when I went into that appointment because without like physical, major physical activity, I felt perfectly fine. Or so I thought I felt fine. So anyways, my, my doctor friends were like, well, just tell your primary care person you have a, you've had atypical chest pains. So I told my primary care person that, and even though everything looked okay, he's like, okay, well, since you have atypical chest pains, try to get an appointment with the cardiologist. You probably want to go do this thing called a calcium scan. I'm like, I'll do it today. He's like, hmm, if you can get in, yeah, do it today, and we'll see what's up. So I went from his office directly to the radiologist and said, can I get a calcium scan? And here's where things are kind of like, I'm so grateful. I've had, I had many points where I could have hopped off the, the, the highway and just said, I'll do it after run sport. But I didn't. I went to, he's like, there's a radiologist by your house. I was like, perfect. I'll go there. I get there. That particular office doesn't do the calcium scan. I was like, oh, but thankfully the lady behind the counter, she's like, you know, what? don't worry, honey, I'll send your information. We have another office five minutes from here. Go over there and we'll, we'll get you wow. set up. I'm like, okay, she made it easy for me. So I went to that one. So I get, I walk right in, I do my scan. I, uh, I go home, back, hop back on the computer, get back to work. Later that afternoon, I get my results. My results show that, you know, you've got mild calcification. I'm like, well, what does that mean? I feel kind of whatever. And my friend, uh, you know, um, my friend who's a doctor, she said, you know, mild is still not good. So you probably should go see a cardiologist. I'm like, well, I, can you get me in to see someone pretty quickly? And she's like, do you mind driving? I said, oh, no problem. I'll drive to Baltimore, wherever you need me to go. So I did. So I got an appointment for Friday. This is, again, I'm supposed to leave for a rent sport on Saturday. And so Friday, I'm like, you know what? Uh, so Thursday night, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fast. I'm going to bring my gym shoes. I'm going to bring shorts and shirt, thinking I'm going to do a stress test. And so I get into the office, 9 o'clock in the morning, see the doctor. Of course, my friend has warned the doctor that I'll probably try to talk him into a Porsche. And so we start talking about cars. And as he's hooking me up and doing the EKG stuff, my results come out. And he looks at my EKG and he stopped talking about Porsches. He's like, hmm, hmm. your EKG today does not look like your EKG from Tuesday. I'm like, so is that bad? He's like, hmm. <laughs> that means we need to take a look. I'm like, okay, what do we need to do? I'm thinking I'm going to hop on a treadmill or something. He's like, no, the really the only way for us to really know what's going on is actually put a camera in your heart. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I was like, is that something we do in the office? He's like, no, you're going to have to go across the street. I'm like, to the hospital? He's like, yep. I'm like, okay. I'm, he's like, it's it's very easy. You know, there's Super high success rate, I think 99% or whatever. <laughs> All you got to do is sit there and lay there, right? I mean, there's always got to be that 1%, one right? It'll, it'll be part of the 1%. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, he, he was like, you know, it's 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 very routine. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, so what what happens? You put a camera in there? He's like, yeah, we'll put a camera in there. We'll know 100% exactly what's going on with your heart. I was like, well, that sounds good. I'm like, but what happens if you find something? He's like, then we've got to move into more advanced procedures to take care of the problem. I'm like, so if you find something like I could have some serious surgery today, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, you're pretty young. I don't think so. But, you know, I don't know. He's like, I don't know until we go in there with the camera. So now it's like getting serious. And like, I'm like, huh, OK. I was like, what's the quickest way to the hospital? He's like, well, by ambulance. I'm like, by ambulance? <laughs> I drove myself up here. He's like, he said, you asked about how the quickest way to get to the hospital. But you can drive. It's just right next door. So I drive, and so one of those things they say is, like, when you have heart issues, like, you have these dark thoughts. I didn't really realize that, but for the past couple of months, you know, when someone happens, something happens to, like, a loved one or someone in PCA pass away, like, I've had kind of dark thoughts of, like, will there be a future for whatever, right? 
So it got kind of dark. I'm going to be honest with you. Like walking into the hospital, I'm like, this is pretty lame. Not only like I'm walking myself to the hospital. I didn't even take a nice car. Like I took I took the minivan because I was going into Baltimore. I'm like, my last drive is like going to be my odyssey. I'm like, this is lame. And like I didn't even say like goodbye to my wife, my kids. And I'm just like, holy moly. And then I walk into the hospital. I go into the cardiology area and um i'm dressed kind of normal right and i walk in they're like, oh are you here to see somebody i'm like no i'm actually i'm here because my doctor sent me i'm like oh they sent you over here and so that kind of changed their attitude because they thought i was like coming to visit someone because i'm fairly young right and i'm 48 it's not normal that they see someone young and kind of chipper first time i heard him say 48 not mid 40s <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they prepped me right away again remember my appointment with the doctor was at nine in the morning now one o'clock i'm on the bed and uh they send a uh a, a, a camera up my veins and the cool part is they send it through my wrist because ah, well, not the groin not the groin yeah. um <laughs> thankfully but there was a the the groin is plan b yeah so uh, i was surprised that they had to prep that area too <laughs> and the, the, the nurse was the nurse was like that's a free service normally you got to pay for that <laughs> it was, it was speed and shopping afterwards <laughs> um so anyways they send a scope up and uh i'm awake i was surprised i thought i'd be asleep they say no we're just gonna give you some medicine you're gonna be alert but you just won't be you know, you won't. Did uh, they tell you what out. the percentage was on this procedure? So as I'm laying on the table, I'm laying on the table. There's these young RNs in there, and they're for some reason they were pumping like '90s hip hop and blah blah blah, like in the room. So I was like, oh, this is pretty good. They didn't know who the artists were, so I'm like rattling off who the artists are, and <laughs> so we got to talking, and we one of them wanted a Cayenne we was to talk about cars as they were prepping, and. Um, so I said, so how often do you guys do this a day? And they're like, oh, 18 to 20 procedures a day. Wow. So that made me feel pretty good. Like I felt like I was just going through something pretty simple. And I said, so is it often that things are just fixed here? And they said, yeah, most of the times. I said, but what happens when they don't fix things here? And she said, ooh, then you go to a different room. <laughs> and I'm like, with oh, the oh, little, little oh, cubby and a sliding yeah. glass door. Oh, sliding yeah. door. With the power tools. <laughs> And it's very uh, cold in yeah. there, isn't it? Get so put on your toe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, it was very cool. I love, you know, I'm. I've always been amazed by the human body and how advanced we are. Even though you know we talk Porsches and how advanced cars are, but it is nothing compared to the human body, right? So they send the camera through. They went through, and there's this particular artery that feeds your heart called the LAD, and most people have heard of um, blockages in the LAD, which is known as the Widowmaker, because it cuts off supply to you know the blood that your heart needs to pump. And um, so he goes in and he goes, hmm, <laughs> yeah, hearing a hum is not exactly uh, you know the m most confidence inspiring. But uh, he said, well, we, you know, the good news is we found what's wrong. I'm like, okay. He's like. Uh, he's like, I'm kind of surprised, but you have a 95% blockage in your oh LED. Wow. I'm like, 95%? Like, how, how do I not? That's an A plus, though. Yeah, man. I'm like, oh, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, rarely do I get A's, but here I got an A. Um, and I said, so what does that mean? He's like, well, uh, the good news is the blockage is at the lower part of your LED. Because when it's at the upper part, it can be very difficult and so on and so forth. And I said, great. So you're just going to put it in and I'm good to go? He's like, He's like, let's um, let me do the procedure, <laughs> and we'll talk afterwards. So sure enough, he throws in there, and I don't know if Robert has a picture of what a stent is, but literally, it's like a metal scaffolding that goes into your artery, and um, they expand it and they push the blockage. They don't they don't disturb the blockage per se, and like like push it and flush it out of the system. They just kind of open the walls up, and when they do that, obviously your blood starts flowing again. And I was so amazed. I said, and I'm talking to the doctor while he's doing this. He's like, I'm like, I think I feel like much better already. He's like, yeah, look at the TV. He's like, this is how your blood was like pinched off, right? Like so almost like someone put a vice grip on the end of a, a, a break, uh, break hose. And now you pull off the, the, uh, the clamp and everything was flowing normal. And um, Manny asked, you know, had I known any other signs, like about a year ago, I noticed I had some discomfort in my left shoulder 
not really they say you're su supposed to experience some sort of numbness in in your arms too but i didn't really have that but i did definitely have like this this discomfort did you think it was in my pickleball shoulder. elbow no because it was my left i'm just kidding okay. <laughs> it was my left but i i had mentioned that to my doctor before but they didn't think it was anything because i had no other signs but as soon as they opened that flow by the time i got to my recovery room my shoulder felt better like like everything wow. and i felt amazing i felt like all, i tell people i felt like i came up from underwater and just was able to take a much bigger breath and i felt amazing and so uh the scary part was not the procedure and the reason why i'm sharing all this with you all is not because i want to bore you to death on a show that's about cars but really if anything is wrong with you and anything that doesn't feel right please go see the doctor and don't wait and, the, and here's where the scary part comes in so usually after getting that procedure you can go home but they said we need to keep you overnight i'm like okay why is that i said well in your blood work there was an enzyme that your heart produces called troponin i think i may not be pronouncing that correctly anyways it's an enzyme that the heart produces when it's getting ready to have a heart attack oh wow so wow. talk about getting wow. so close to the light and that's what's scary for me is i didn't realize like i was getting that close to the light and the like i said on tuesday there was no sense of urgency for me to go get the scan there was no sense of urgency for me to get that appointment with a cardiologist i just happened to be ocd and wanted to know and i just happened to you know was able to get these appointments but the doctor said literally had you left you would have had an episode if not that day wow. or the next two wow. or two or three days and obviously i would have been on a plane yeah, Rensport. Rensport. i would have been at Rensport, and you know minutes means different things yeah. right when episodes like that happen and of course i was feeling great in recovery so what does we do he starts doing research on google about like lad blockage and blah 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 mm -hmm. do you have any idea what the survival rates for an lad blockage not, is not 99 percent. no uh, very much the opposite 10 yeah. percent. wow that's not pretty wow. good <laughs> <laughs> too, too small of a number for me too small yeah. of a number for me but more importantly is like when you have an episode like that you can actually damage your heart Right, mm -hmm. and that means that's what you were lucky that's about. What, that's, that's what, what yeah, very lucky yes. about. And that's why yeah. they kept me overnight. And mm -hmm. um, I tell you what, I'm so lucky. I'm so thankful. Um, I felt fantastic. The the staff at the hospital, the doctors, all my friends and family, all, all you guys that were keeping tabs on me as I was going through this. Um, it was weird to think that I had a heart procedure, and I felt amazing almost immediately and the doctor said well obviously we don't want you going anywhere just in case and don't want to be at high altitudes blah 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 so i had to s stay back for a week but i was like i had more energy than ever before and it was so exciting to see what was going on at Rensport. and you know the executive council and the staff here has been built where you know, we're a pretty sophisticated system. We have a lot of cogs um, that go into an event uh, to make things happen. But when one of us is down, the others can pick each other up. And that was clearly demonstrated at Rensport because I, from what I could see, uh, I was you know glued to my Facebook feed and people were sending me photos. And well, Richard was interviewing executive director positions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> plan B. He was, at, he was at the parking lot. <laughs> plan B. You weren't supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it, it went off flawless. And yes, yeah. I, 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 I am a little sad that I missed out on Rensport 7, but um, I'm so thankful that everything worked out for me medically, health wise, and uh, to give you an idea how quick the recovery was. Like I, like I said, I felt like I could go play pickleball right when I got back to recovery, but obviously they have to wait and monitor. And I was clear to go back to my normal activity the following Wednesday. Oh wow! And That's I've probably paid, played six or so pickleball yeah. time slots since then. So I, I feel was... awesome. We and, certainly uh, missed you, though, oh. but we're blessed to have you back. Thank you. And, thank and you. Uh, even better health than you were before. And my mission is, you know, I, when this all happened, so many people, there were people that were here for the open house um, mm -hmm. that mentioned that, you know, oh, I had that done and this, that, mm -hmm. and the done. And I'm just so surprised that I've never mm -hmm. really heard much about, like you hear about the Widowmaker, but you yeah. never hear about 
how people got there and how it was a close call for them. But there, there's been a sizable amount of people that have told me that they have. So my mm -hmm. mission is to really to tell people is get it checked out. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't wait. Because if I had just taken any of those possible exits, yes, it could have yeah. been very different. Yeah. So if you're not feeling great, go see the doctor because it could make a difference. I have one question though. Did yeah. you win those pickleball matches that right, right before? Here's the crazy the thing is <laughs> I'm actually faster yeah. and I, I'm, I'm still not hitting like I still hold back a little bit, yeah. But that's um, but good. I'm definitely faster. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for the other people, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Holding back. Yeah, I'm definitely faster than before. Uh -huh. um, I think my my second day of pickleball, I was like, I didn't lose a game. So yeah, yeah, yeah it feels awesome. pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Training regime, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, you can. I mean, it's amazing when you have oxygen, right? Yeah. yeah. And you don't feel like you need to slow down. Are you, are you blaming this on why Damon beat you in autocrossing last year? <laughs> I don't know the 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 right foot and steering. I don't know how much oxygen. Maybe the, my thought process was not. Yeah. Uh, reactions was not as fast. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. for sure. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. We're, we're blessed to have ne so. next year. I, I think uh, this year I'm pretty much done. Yeah, all. for me this year with all yep. the travel and the weather yep. that's about to come, I think so our tomorrow when we fly, will be your first flight since the procedure. Tomorrow will be my first flight heading out to San Diego to visit uh, at HRE to set up for Unstock. And Great. I'm excited. I'm Great. excited to get back to normal. Now, will it set off any TSA alarms or anything? Or is they it small enough? They, or it they didn't mention. I was yeah. like, do I need a card? Like, I have yeah. a card that shows that I have a stent, but yeah. there, I don't know that it's going to set off anything. I'll find out. Um, I definitely don't qualify for a handicap permit. Because I, yes. I was just inquiring. I mean, I just I was like for this for this short recovery time. Like he's like, no, you don't get it. I was like, I was like, well, sometimes you see people that look like plan ahead. I'm just I was just curious. Uh, apparently, you don't qualify for that. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll be heading out to Unstock, and then we're gonna come back. It's a quick turnaround because we leave Thursday, come back Friday, and then we head up to New Jersey for Boardwalk reunion, and then. I'll be turning back around. I think you stay overnight, right, Manny? Yes, my wife yeah. is already up there, or yeah. she'll be up there volunteering. Yeah, so um, then we have a full weekend. Then we have executive council meetings at the end of the month. So yeah. we're back yeah. in We're back in action. I feel good. But I, I am going to, even though I don't know that it's my, my diet that contributed to that blockage, but I'm going to treat it as it did, and I have been eating smarter. And honestly, just the thought of, like, crazy – greasy stuff possibly clogging up mm. the system doesn't appeal to me right now yeah. um, i had a lot of people ask you know uh in fact there are a couple people where's vu is he hiding you know laughing and i'm like well actually <laughs> um, but i kept telling people i'm not sure how you had you know that heart issue when my diet is so horrible i mean it'll probably catch up to me if i keep going oh, yes. like this but yeah. there should be a message <laughs> yeah there are two things uh, yeah. tobacco yeah, and yeah. well, your your diet. I don't yeah. think yeah. you eat at all, so but the food might be not. Oh, be I do, problem. but it's usually like frozen pizza. Here, so. here, here's the thing, <laughs> so. Damon: medical equipment, medical medicine, whatever has the ability to check your stuff out. Yeah. So if you're ever wondering, which yep. you should wonder, is just go check it out. And it, I I kind of said it was like sort of like a um, a Carfax. Like if you go and get your stuff done, and the Carfax shows clean, you're good. But if the yeah. Carfax shows something, then you might want to investigate yeah. it because yeah. it's better to, like I said, get so on your it. Your show yeah. is like an IMS replaced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another 45,000 miles and a needed note. Yeah. yeah. And, Forever, and, right? and I told the Carfax doctor. Report so I told the doctor, that. so now that yeah. you've cleared it out and it took me 50 years to plug it up, like, do I get a reset? <laughs> He's like, no, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, so. so anyways, uh, I want to send out congratulations to uh, Damon as well as to Bogdan, because on YouTube, we went over 80,000 subscribers. Yep. And on Last Insta night, I think, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. and on Kudos. Instagram, over 87,000 yep. uh, subscribers. So, man, we are just kicking butt, and I'm very proud at the amount of progress we've had on um, social media. So congratulations to you guys on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, also, I want to, yeah, if you don't, uh, if you haven't, Make sure you uh, be, give us a like, comment. I think we got to change that uh, graphic, though. What's that? Because Twitter no longer exists. Oh, yeah, we got to update that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, of course, we love reading the comments. And again, thank you for those that were checking on me uh, while I was out. Uh, I was certainly reading those comments. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channels, what are you waiting for? Just do that. It's easy and it's free. Um, I also wanted to share with you that we just released out there the fall PCA member only raffle. Uh, we've got an amazing allocation from Porsche Cars North America. Not many of these are out there, but we have a Spider RS as the grand prize and a car that you probably haven't heard about yet. Um, but the second actually funny enough, Porsche had it at the LA Auto Show last year. Oh, did they? Mm -hmm. So they announced it for the American market two years early. Probably I'm wondering because they knew they weren't going to be back at the LA Auto Show. Oh, I wonder. I, wonder if I that missed was that because yeah. I wasn't there. The style edition. The is style what edition. Yeah. So the Came second grand prize um, after the Spider RS are 718, your choice of either Cayman or Boxster style edition. So since you saw the style edition, can you share yeah. what that includes? Um, yeah. If uh, Robert scrolled down on that page, there's a little link to a style edition announcement. Um, and it's basically you can choose between a, uh, I want to say it's for the base car only. Okay. But I could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's just I for the base so. car. The base car yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it was for the S as well, but it's a, a yeah. base car. That's the Spider RS. It's one of the other links, Robert. My apologies. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, uh, the what just popped up is the style edition. You'll see a, I think it's Ruby Star. Uh, Neo, I think, right? Neo Before Ruby Star. It's yeah. a new style yeah. of Ruby Star. And then a, I but forget they had the other color. The show. There yeah. was one of those, I thought, at Trep in St. Louis. Already, uh, the style edition in Ruby style really? with white wheels and yeah. white striping and everything. It, it might be uh, um, one of the one of the folks uh, locals uh, drove up to the oh, really? upstairs parking lot. Oh, nice! When we were having the German yeah. uh, dinner, and it was a Ruby Star uh, Neo. If, style edition. If it was she a said style, it was a style edition. So it's boxer. been available in Europe and rest of world yeah. this yeah. past year. So I'm yeah. wondering if she picked it up overseas oh, yeah. and somehow it was it, a very cute little car yeah, yeah. but yeah it's, it's all about style but you s still get the same great performance you know from the turbocharged flat four which i'm personally i've driven a three those cars they are plenty fast um and you get a little bit of extra style remember when getting a regular cayman s was like no big deal or boxster yeah. s yeah uh, for a raffle but now just getting any we could raffle all the allocations <laughs> yeah and right. people would be happy to buy yeah. them so just to get the uh, Second place is pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. EC is not eligible for this. So You're welcome. It almost, yeah, yeah. almost yeah. makes me want to quit. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. Not quite. Almost. Yeah, when well, none of us here at the table are eligible. But yep. it's so cool to see. And it happens to people that buy one, two uh, entries. And uh, so many people that we've uh, surprised with the raffle, they've never won anything yeah. uh, in their life. We, we did have one person uh, that had one three vehicles in their lifetime oh Can my you believe wow. that oh my. they won uh this was uh mr kibby who won the oh, um he won the restored uh 72 uh, or 73 73 restored 73. 73 that we did with porsche classic mm -hmm. but in the 70s he won a bmw 320i with the bmw club mm -hmm. and in the 80s he won a ford f-150 <clears throat> with the local fire department but he said he he, he would buy raffled whenever he saw raffle he, he would, would buy, buy it. It. Absolutely. yeah which reminded me this morning i bought uh two tickets for um lottie uh yes the powerball powerball, powerball. it's yeah. it's uh, i don't buy lottery all the time it's got to be worthwhile because it was one point seven three billion, I think. Oh, wow. And I thought to myself, I saw Mega Millions, and that was only up to forty eight million. I mean, who gets out of bed for right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's like by the time you pay taxes, you may have to split it with somebody. What is it, ten million? Yeah. And I thought about this as I walked to my car that has more duct tape on the seat than leather, <laughs> and the back window so taped up I can't see. But I would not waste money on uh, yeah. forty eight million. I'm one point seven billion. billion That's I insane. That. I yeah, don't know. So the lump sum would be about seven hundred grand, uh, seven hundred million probably. So uh, yeah. you know what? <laughs> you bought that thinking or hoping that you would win. Honestly, I'm scared for you that if you you do win, that's a that 
that that life could be very difficult. He's going to change. I can. Right? Yes, I will. Security. I will change. Not only is he going to change, he's going to disappear. <laughs> we'll be like, where did Manny go? Did he take today off? I will get a good traffic lawyer. Haven't you retainer. seen? Have you seen those documentaries of lottery winners where their life really gets turned upside down? Like the yeah. the gentleman in West Virginia that was one shot at, or like his daughter was kidnapped, or. Like you just can't live a normal life, and you can say you don't yeah. tell people, or you can hire what. It's, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I would be at the top of the hill at Rensport. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll stay in my house. Are... I'll build three stories on top of it, and I'll be the tallest house next to Dundas. But, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, to, I, uh, to me, I, I winning winning a couple of million would be cool because I think that would really Keeps real. Okay, yeah, it enhances your life, but not so much where everybody's going to all of a sudden be in Auburn and ask for a loan or feel as though you've got yeah. to. Like, no, I would be very generous. Like, all my friends I would give money to, the ones who pissed me off, <laughs> not my friends, I would make sure they would know that they didn't get money. Thanks, so Danny. I think Vu and I played this game with each other once where we said, well, if we won, what would be the first, certainly not the only Porsche that you oh, would buy? Oh, gosh, you know, yeah, what, we did what, play what that. Would it buy? What would buy? What would you do? For well, GT. So those yeah. of you that are listening, if you won Powerball... <laughs> What would be the first Porsche that you'd buy? Comment below. Manny, yeah. you, you, I think you already know your car. I've always said like a 550 Spider. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to get it from Vu's doctor, the inventor of stents. He yes. has a yeah. number yes. of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Courage GT for me, but I, I feel GT. like that Courage GT is so popular that it's almost like I need to find something new. Yeah. Pretty soon here. But uh, yeah, Courage GT still. I think the 959 was more popular than Rensport. The yeah, that, I think you're right as well. Um, I don't think I would go for 959 if I had that kind of money. You know, after spending a little bit of time with some of the older cars, I think a 910 or a 906 would be a lot about, of fun. How about you, Richard? Well, it changes every day. Ask me tomorrow, it'll be different. Yeah. But I'm thinking I would call up our friends at the Porsche, the Sundervich program, and, oh, and do a build custom, something. build something, Very go, go, go Very crazy smart. with my own oh, dreams. Yeah. So, 904 Living Legends. Yeah. There we so go. So <laughs> I would do something that's probably sacrilege, but I think it would be the coolest thing ever is to take something like a Moby Dick. Don't, don't say LS1 into something. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would take like a Moby Dick and somehow make it streetable. Yeah. That would not? be so cool. Yeah, just have not or pop or, or buy the and... one that is treatable, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. Uh, speaking of cars at Rensport, can we touch upon a couple of cars that I know that was introduced there, and maybe also talk a little bit about Manny's kind of disappointment of cars that weren't at Rensport. So, first and foremost, is a big <laughs> the the big uh, reveal on Thursday night was the GT3 R Rensport Edition, which is a beautiful car. I liked it better than the uh, 935. Mm -hmm. that, that wing definitely reminded me of the uh, 935s, the way they were. Um, 77 lucky people are going to get this car. Yeah, it's it's not a street car. It's a pure track car. Um, yeah, I think Grant Larson is the one who designed. Uh, so someone that is lucky enough to buy a car like that, are they just going to DEs? Because it doesn't fall into any sort of rules for so, racing. You know, when the 935 came out, I remember at the last Rensport, the, the talk was they were going to have a series for these cars and people were going to race them. You know, internally we were all like, there's no, no fucking way <laughs> no anyone's going to race one of these. Yeah. And sure enough, the only time we've seen them is... Uh, I think Jeff Schwartz driving the Road Scholar. I think mm -hmm. uh, I think Cam Ingram was driving yeah. it at uh, Indianapolis. Yeah, and at Pikes Peak. Yeah. Pikes Peak uh, as but well. no, we never. That's, really, that's more of like an exhibition. Really, ride. it's not yeah. made for a race series. Yeah. That's what yeah. Cup cars are for. Um, but well, you, you know, know, like the Ferrari XX, you know, and some of their later models where you can't take it home. Well, you can probably take this one home, mm -hmm. but you can't take that car home. You just arrive at the track and they take care of you. That's what this seems like to me. Mm -hmm. But man, a million and forty six thousand dollars, no race series, just track and every special. single one of them will be sold. Yeah, I oh, know. I, I made. They probably sold out. Did they, why, did they say why they limited to seventy seven? What was the? Uh... It was the nine thirty five slash seventy seven car oh, okay. that they were uh, basing it on. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. I made inquiries. I was told I was number eighty on the list. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they laughed. Yeah. They laughed. <laughs> right. <laughs> So the other car that we've been talking about for quite some time and the best secret that wasn't a secret was seeing the ST. 
and uh, we were thinking maybe it would be uh, during Monte Car Week, but then we said Monte Car Week was all about the Spider RS, and sure enough, the ST shows up at Rensport, and it's at the top of the hill. Did you got? You guys were working, so I don't even know if you were able to venture to the top of the hill. Bogdan and I, oh yeah, went to you the did top see it. Okay, on the first day, right yeah. in the morning, and then uh, vowed we'd never go back. But oh. we, we did see it. It was pretty amazing up there. Um, but honestly, Bogdan and I were so busy that we just didn't have the time mm-hmm. to go back. But it was up there, kind of. It was cool to see it in that location, but you got to think, and I guess they did have shuttles, mm-hmm. but that's quite a ways to trek to see that car. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah. You know. So my question to you is in person, did it wow you or because we've been talking about ST for over a year now and then to see a car that's fairly sedate in appearance, how did it come across in person? I thought it was stunning to look at. Yeah. Um, but it does show the size when you think ST mm-hmm. in terms of the history of Porsche. I think at least something small, light, uh, maybe bulgy fenders. Right. And it certainly had the bulgy fen- fenders. But the overall appearance of the 992 and its size. Mm-hmm. But the same you body. You can't is, escape that. I mean, you haven't you changed know. your body on it. It's Correct. It's the same no, body. Yeah. No, no, just a little wider than it's, your regular Carrera. Right. It's got the yeah. turbo, I think, the turbo hips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I think a, it's a beautiful stunning car. package. But I don't think package. it has that menacing look of the yeah. traditional yeah. ST. Yeah. Yeah. Not really like, I don't know that you could even create a car like that in today's standards, right? But when you think of the ST of years ago, it's like that's a menacing looking thing. Whereas this one looked very polished and I don't know. I think you'll. So telling the difference between a GT3 Touring and a 911 ST, it's probably going to be kind of tough for yeah. some people if they know that it has that GT3 engine. Unless they know which details to look for, they might not know exactly. But one of the easy details is behind the front wheels, they've got the, the, the arrow like blades and a little opening. Kind of just yeah. like the GT3 like the GT3 RS, 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 similar yeah. RS, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and um, the Touring doesn't have that. And there, there are little things around the car that sort of tip you off to that, but yeah. it's very understated. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it in person. Yeah, I, I personally like the understatement of yeah. it. Um, the color it was wasn't; it was like orange, it was, it was like a yellow. butterscotch, Bahama yellow, Bahama yeah. yellow. Yeah, so yeah. beautiful color. It was uh, fit that car. Uh, I think the other car I saw that I thought was kind of cool was the uh, GT4 RS Panamericana. I think there's two of them that are going to be built, and there it is. And then I believe uh, uh, Patrick Dempsey is actually driving one of the cars in the Panamericana. I thought that was cool. Did you guys get to see that in person? No. Nope. Glanced I at think, it. Oh, uh, I, I think there's I missed so many that guys one. you just glanced at it, right? I, I think I missed that one. Yeah. So iconic race. Car. That was placed right in the middle of the Tag Heuer tent. Uh-huh. So no kidding. Is that it where was? it was? So if you remember, you know how <laughs> we started right the, you know really? how we started Manny at the 3561 uh-huh. and then took a U. Yep, yep. It was at the other the, the ending of our video basically. And it was on a little platform, but you've got 935s, 934s, 550s, like, and then you have this little GT4 RS. I thought it was just a GT4 RS or something, which by itself would get a lot of attention, but when you're in the Hall of Legends, uh, that doesn't really The interior, I don't know if you Mm -hmm. see the interior of it with, like, the the rally gauges and stuff. That's pretty cool. It's a cool-looking car. Oh, yeah, it is. It looks like... They said it still doesn't look like anything different. And somebody said, well, just bolt on a set of rally gauges. <laughs> so that looks like what they did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Although it looks nice. I'm sure if I did that in my garage, it wouldn't have yeah. the same effect. So I didn't know at this, this race they opened it up to modern cars. Is that a new thing I, for this rally? I guess so. Or? I guess so. So um, uh, they, sure they've always had car, modern cars, but like yeah. the actual racing, I don't think so. Like modern-ish, you know, yeah. our spiders are out there, but um, oh, yeah. exhibition stuff. It's, it's amazing, amazing when you're a title sponsor, what you can have done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, the other car, the car that I got to see at Goodwood, also made its way to Rensport Reunion. And it was in the news just yesterday. I, I tried to pull up the, the article, but I... I couldn't find it again and you always talk about you know will these quote-unquote concept cars or supercars actually become production and so what i'm talking about obviously is the mission, mission x, x mission yeah. x mm-hmm. that was there uh, but in the news yesterday they said that um, keanu reeves bought the latest or is in line to have the first porsche supercar which i'm assuming is the mission x is that true 
I'm not sure, but hey, Keanu, if you're a listener, contact <laughs> us. We would love to do a one mile review, <laughs> one mile review. <laughs> maybe a five or ten mile but, review. But more, but... more importantly, I mean, yeah, like he's a cool star and everything. Yeah. But what's cool is, I guess this car is going to make it to production. I mean, uh, I think we all I'm knew sure it, it probably is. would. Yeah. Like yeah, I said, it's going to exist in the main. And talking to yeah. some 918 <laughs> owners at Rensport, they, they, were, they were approached by yeah. Porsche mm. uh, asking, you know, what it would take for them to order this car. Um, Man, I can't imagine seeing that thing in real life on the streets. That's. And you remember the whole cycle of how we saw the 19 Spider evolve. Yeah. From what it. Uh, yeah. When we first saw it, it didn't even have a dash. We couldn't even see anything above the uh, tip, tip of the steering wheel. The flywheel hybrid yeah. system. The, or at uh, least on the. <clears throat> race car prototype remember it had a little flywheel oh that was the uh, rsr 19 rsr RSR one yeah yeah the interior of this uh (laughs) prototype was really amazing i thought it was just fantastic man you know it's funny this is how busy um i was but i'm sure i speak for uh most of pca employees is uh so i was right next to this car but i was waiting for grant larson and uh one of our freelancers who was presenting on video um about the gt3 rn sport and there was such a crowd, and there was no time. I didn't even see the car. Oh, really? And I was right next to it the whole time. Yeah. I just uh, there. I mean, there's so much yeah. to look at and take in at Rensport. So I totally yeah. understand if you miss out on a car <laughs> yeah. because there's yeah. thousands of cars yeah. to look at. So um, let's, uh, man, this 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 episode is definitely going through your almost <laughs> to half an hour mark. Um, so let's talk about the two videos you released. Uh, and the the one that is really just I think crushing it right now is the yeah. uh, the giant killer to giant. Yeah, I, I think when I um, so we started filming this, it's a uh, it's about Porsche's journey from 1951 when they entered Le Mans for the first time and then won their class with the 356L all the way until the uh, Porsche Salzburg win in 1970 in the number 23 car. And uh, it's just basically the story of how Porsche got there. I know we didn't cover every single car Porsche made up to that point. We actually have footage of them. We might come out with some videos later. But it was basically a very general um, overview, touching based on some of the really important cars. And Rod Emery, Emery Motorsports, talked about the SL since he restored it, the one that won. Uh, Cam Ingram is an expert on everything Porsche, but we had him focus in on until 1967, I believe. And then um, Brian Redman, legendary Porsche factory driver and just le- legendary race driver in general. And um, th- the founder of the Revs Institute, Miles Collier, both spoke in sort of conversational form about several, I want to say five or six cars. It was 908 Longtail, 908 3, 917. The cars that Redman drove. Yeah, the cars that Redman drove. He didn't come in until near the end of the story when... Yeah. Uh, Piek was at full swing. Exactly. So so we didn't touch on the 907. That might be another future video. Um, but basically, this nearly hour-long video from people who really know these cars are, are experts on them. And, you know, one person who drove uh, many of the fastest cars in the day uh, talking about them on video. And um, in my email, I think, to uh, you guys when it was done... And from 90% to 100%, huge difference. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crazy what editing can do. And again, Will Kayon did a great job with that. But I saw that and I thought, this is the best video we've ever produced. That's awesome. I think it is. And least. I think it's going to be one of those that is also like a slow burn where yeah. people are going to come across it and realize yeah. how much history is in there and you can learn so much. And so yeah. it's great to have. Congratulations to you. Well, thank you. The yeah. early uh, uh, other reviews I've read online yeah. about it are very positive. Yeah. Well, I'm, and they basically said it's the best. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad uh, Gurney Eagle out. said that. Gurney, yeah. I think uh, yeah. Mike, Mike. Yeah. yeah he yeah. was, um, yeah. this is the best. And I'm Mike. Yeah. I agree. I said that <laughs> before I even saw your comment. And uh, yeah. so we're on the same page there. It's a great story. And Lord yep. knows when I had to write the article for Pano, it was the hardest <laughs> articles I had to write because you had to make it uh, interesting to read, but there's so much to cover, and each car is worthy of its own article. Then there's all the subplots, if you will, uh, the different cars that we couldn't mm-hmm. really get into um, that uh, really didn't weren't the prototypes. That is, uh, you mm-hmm. know, what what fascinated me was uh, Piek, Piek and his uh, just um, drive to win Le Mans. And how much money he spent, how much he almost bankrupted the company, but everything he did to to, to take this company and just uh, 
make it so dominating in, in motorsport. It was like a, definitely a man on the mission. He's one of the people that I wish I would have met out of all the Porsche people mm-hmm. I met. Uh, the funny thing, everyone I would tell from Porsche that, you know, I would love to meet the Ferdinand Piac, they would all say, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, because, I mean, the guy was a genius. It, regardless of his personality or how people thought of him, the guy yeah. was just a genius, and he and he's a large part of why Porsche is what it, what it is today. Uh, so, yeah, it was a great video. It was done uh, in a great documentary style that uh, – at least gave a yeah. glimpse into what uh, what could be done. So the next question is, what is our next video going to be? Uh, uh, too soon. Yeah. <laughs> You're still <laughs> recovering. I am. That, that was a tough edit. Um, that was a long project. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, you know, uh, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to mention no, comments. Before the show, we were talking. And what's always fascinating me, but I the problem with this video we found out was that a lot of the people that were key that had raced are no longer with us. Mm-hmm. And so before we run into that problem again, I would love, and I haven't seen a whole lot of um, doc, uh, videos about uh, the uh, 70 uh, uh, RSR, the uh, IROC series that Penske started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a short series, but Lord knows there's so many uh, copies of those cars made up. Yeah. And anytime even a copy shows up, yeah. it's a big hit at any show. Uh, and I still have, my, have, have in my head that... Uh, that famous shot of the open transporter having all the RSRs on the back of the different colors. And I thought, yeah. you know, Roger Penske is still, still with us. He could, the first hand of what it took to convince Porsche yeah. to make these cars for him and uh, to convince the driver, that'd be pretty cool to uh, to document that with the living the, living legends. The yeah. story that I recall from this, I don't, I assume it's accurate, but uh, was actually that was Mark Donahue's uh, suggestion to Roger because they were looking to build a spec car, mm. and he said, "Well, you should just use the Porsche Carrera because it's bulletproof, you know." And and it was so really Mark, I think that whispered into Mr. Penske, "This is the car for the series." Well, I love I love that we're taking the initiative, as you said. There's so many people that we use, you know, that, that was here um, before that we didn't. You know, we've spoken to them or we've mm-hmm. had, you know, uh, instances where we've met them, but we didn't record it. And Manny, Damon and the rest of the team, you know, they're actively mm-hmm. seeking out people to capture all of this on video. So since Richard is here, just know that there's going to be a budget yes, request. Big, Come big, 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 big. <laughs> so that we can capture this for our yeah. archives. Hit, hit that like, <laughs> and, subscribe yeah. hit that like <laughs> and subscribe button. Hit that like and subscribe button so Richard can but give like, us a bigger budget. Like, like and subscribe is like hope and prayers. That's not right. cash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I think what Damon's done with this uh, video is it's a great introduction. It's the kind of thing you can go to Roger Penske and say, take a look at this. This is what we're going to do for this video we want to do. Mm-hmm. Or you yeah. go to these people who are key in the 956 or 962 era and say, hey, this is how we want to work. It's not a quick uh, seven-minute video done mm-hmm. in, in the basement. This is going to be a Oh, yeah. A, we probably had three or four uh, hours video. of interview. Probably three or four hours of in- interview footage. Um and, you know, it was hard to see what the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel, w- when we were right, in it. And, right. in fact, that light didn't appear until, I think, the last second to last edit where I'm like, okay, we got it. And the great thing but, about uh, it is it'll stand the test of time. <laughs> if you do oh, it yeah, right, exactly. it's accurate and well done. It'll, it'll yeah. be there forever. Yeah. No, so. yeah, I, was, uh, I was impressed with that. I liked watching it. Yeah, same. Uh, you also dropped uh, a video of you doing a one mile review on a pretty iconic car, yeah. a car that not many people get to drive, and that's a 911 S Targa. Yeah, that was, that was the first time I'd driven a um, an early 911 S. So this was a 71 with a 2.2 liter um, engine. And uh, if you're watching YouTube right now, you'll see that it's um, a blue car with Porsche Museum on the side. So this was a Porsche Museum car. And I was on a trip where... Um, uh, Porsche had brought different waves of journalists from different countries, and I was there with some American journalists, Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, nice. and uh, we all were driving this car and several others for two days to experience most, not all the 964 was missing, but most 911s, almost every 911 generation, um, and also experience Germany's cultural heritage and sort of celebrating the 75th anniversary of Porsche, Porsche they wanted to take us somewhere that had a lot of German culture. Mm. So um, on Favorite. the side, this was the, the one mile reviews were really things that I did on the side for this trip. You'll see a panorama article in May in the destination issue. Um, but this was one of those cars, 2.2 liter, 180 horsepower, 
revs to, I want to say, in the neighborhood of 7,500 or so RPM, really revs, such a small engine, yet plenty of power, uh, skinny tires and wheels, and they were on the Michelin XWX, I believe they're called, um, vintage style tires with new rubber, but vintage tread. And it's a weird juxtaposition for me of new and old because the car itself, the way the engine feels and the control weights drive a lot newer than an early seventies car. Mm -hmm. But if you have like this car did the thin rim steering wheel and the tall tires really skinny, that brings it back to the seventies a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it definitely drove way newer than I'm sure almost any American car of that era, but um, having driven a 72 E with suspension, you know, and new tires and all that, it's, it's pretty crazy what little mods, I'm sure the tires are the biggest ones, how the tires change, how the cars feel. Absolutely. So didn't it feel like you were driving and I like driving older cars. I feel you drive with your fingertips. It feels like you're in a time machine. Yes. Like you're driving a bus. Yeah. And you, uh, you you, you have to like reset your brain and not expect things to happen the way a modern car would be. But you, Mm -hmm. it's very fun. It's very fun to have, you know, you know, the car has no power steering, but because of the the, the skinny wheels and the big mm-hmm. wheel, it's still very it's maneuverable, very, very easy, yeah. and it all works. Um, driving a dog leg transmission is kind of weird because yeah. you start off so it's close fun, to your thigh. But yeah, it's it's, it's long it's, throws. But that's all part of the experience, yeah. and you know, I I yeah. love cars. You know that that yep. sort of take you back, and uh, yep. you know, to to what that experience was like back in the day. Yep, very cool. A lot of a lot of people say the 2.2 S engine though is their favorite of the early really? early 911 yeah. engine people. They say that this one Interesting. is just, just the best. Yeah, um, so this is the only S I've driven. Rev, rev happy nature and yeah. So I, I've heard that a couple times now, and I've also heard that the e. 70 the the 2.2 liter is kind of I wouldn't say the worst, but some mm-hmm. people like the torque of the 2.4, and then mm-hmm. others like the the rev happy mm-hmm. nature. Mm-hmm. It also seems like there are people who like a mix of that, Absolutely. which is what the yeah. two point two yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like the one they have. Yeah, they like the <laughs> one they have exactly. Right? Or they like the one they don't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But but I, I really I need to drive all of them. Yeah, they really know for sure. There you so. go. <laughs> so but before we get into the news, I'm just trying to catch up on on time here. Um, I wanted to point out something like I'm not often surprised by things, um, but. Uh, in, in this case, there was something that happened at Rensport, and it happens at other events too, um, where things kind of grow legs and disappear. But it's, <laughs> but, so I'm talking about sometimes you notice people ask for posters or they grab the, the PCA logo that's on the front of the, um, the, the podium, let's say. But usually people ask. Um, I know one year at Rensport, they literally saw someone hop out of a 911 with a set of scissors and cut out the banner that was tied to uh, the fence. But I think most of that happens at the very end. I would like to think so. But it's crazy for me to think that there was an incident and Porsche has this new initiative where they have these passports. And you can go around to different events and go to different um um, displays and you get your passport stamp, sort of like a. Uh, Actually, this was for the um cl- the classic book. The classic book. It wasn't the passport. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. wasn't the passport. Yeah. Right. Oh, they okay. Were stamping the books. Oh, they were stamping the books. Yeah. That, uh, so they had all these uh the new um what's it called the uh, origin originali originali book, originali, yeah. uh, okay. mm-hmm. book. and uh, so when you went into uh, the uh, Sonderwunsch house, um that's first thing you hit was uh-huh. a table and uh-huh. they had a, you know artistically laid out. And they had a stamp, so you could stamp that. Hey, this is for the staff to use. <laughs> well, yeah, they were letting yeah. people stamp it. Yeah, uh, but there was someone there. Yeah, and uh, and uh, this so, was early on in the and during the. Uh, and here's the, the crazy event. thing: is we hear that <laughs> one of the stamps disappear, which is I think I, stolen, stolen, <laughs> stolen. So if you did it, shame on you. I'm shaming you right here. Um, because you didn't wait till the end. You was didn't not ask. gifted. It was, was not gifted. gifted. The worst part of it all is it ends up on eBay, and the picture on eBay shows it uh, laying on top of a PCA Rensport Reunion volunteer shirt, and they, pro- they probably stole that too. And then you look at the name of the seller, and we tried to look to see if they were a uh, a member or not, and we can't find. Thankfully, they're not a member, but I don't know how they got. 
the volunteer mm-hmm. shirt. I don't know how they and got I can the tell stamp. you it was one hundred percent not gifted because Porsche came to us asking us if this was a member. Uh, because quite frankly, you know, they there was a lot of people that went with books that didn't have stamps because so, of this person. So for those of you that are not watching YouTube, it's a it's a like a wooden handled stamp um, that says Porsche Rentsport Reunion. It has the date. Mm-hmm. How much, green do, you, how much do you think that could possibly be worth, right? Like that probably costs 50 bucks to make. <clears throat> they put it on eBay, and I can't believe someone is willing to pay this, but someone won the bid at $1,576. I believe is grand in, theft in uh, California. I believe that. in karma. Wow. I believe in yeah. karma. So if yeah, you collected $1,500 for stealing something, something is coming towards you. That's all I'm going to say about yeah. that. I, I, I hope they donated it to charity. Oh, so. I, you know what I kind of yeah. hope? You know what I kind of hope? I kind of hope Porsche bought it. So when ah. it gets delivered, they they'll know the, who they bought it from ah, interesting. and then get that money back. That's what I hope. I wouldn't be surprised. It, it has actually. my DNA on it, by the way. Uh, I'm too uh, much information, man. You, you mean you <laughs> use the stamp? Well, Tom Gorsuch too. Oh. <laughs> no, we stamped our uh, our bodies with it. Oh God! Oh. Let's have it like a tattoo. <laughs> that's why. That's why it's worth so much. <laughs> uh, anyways, I just thought that was one of the weird things that did happen at Rensport, and definitely don't condone that. Please don't take stuff from the. No, we had yeah. uh, we had grow bad. We had a display for uh, showing oh, what yeah. our grow badge looked like. And somebody walked off with that. We were selling them. You didn't have to steal the display unit. Yeah, you could have just bought one. So in the past, the track has auctioned uh, on eBay mm-hmm. some of the signage. Sure, some of the posters and mm-hmm. signage. And I've actually bid on those and have a you couple. You did it in the right garage. way. You Sucker. did it the right way. You know, but there, it wasn't <laughs> like I wasn't up on a step ladder <laughs> clipping off yeah, things. There's and, people and swiping all, them. But. I mean, at parade yeah. at works. You know, you know yeah. the uh, the class signs that we have at works. So, you know, yeah. let's say this is the the early 9-11 yeah. class, and it's yeah. sort of like a real estate sign. Yeah. We literally had someone pull the sign up in the middle of the event and walk <laughs> off with it. And I think yeah, Manny's the one that caught him and said, where are you going with that? They're like, this would look in my garage. You do realize we're having the event right now. We do need that sign. <laughs> After this was oh, stolen, uh, Paul yeah. Greger, oh. <laughs> Paul Greger, who was on the show, podcast two podcasts ago, was telling us, because he's the one who came up asking us if we knew who this person was. Um, he reminded us that when they had a billboard stolen a full-size billboard at sebring oh at sebring the wow. main billboard the main, the main billboard when you come in it was uh, lit up oh with gosh. spotlights it had the thick uh, metal cables holding it down they come in the next morning and it's missing that's oh my wow. insane a full-size billboard uh i mean they're enthusiasts for sure but that's not the right way to no <laughs> portray your enthusiasm. but then they put it on ebay yeah. within yeah. days after stealing it that's what uh yeah. <laughs> it, like well, no one ever said criminals were smart, though. It, well, <laughs> anyways. Anyways. Um, so let's get into some Porsche news. The first item Manny has here is the uh, Boxster EV. Yeah, so they have more spy shots. Uh, this was uh, it's showing looking good. It's getting closer and closer to being revealed. Um, I'm so excited about this car to see what, uh, what it's like. And uh, uh, you notice the wheels are a little bit different, too. They're going mm-hmm. more for the... Uh, it's got a little bit of that like arrow, arrow look. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's. Um, I'm happy that it looks like a Boxster. Yeah, they're, they're not trying to. Sometimes electric cars. They, it's funny they how they still have. A, they have a little tailpipe. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's gonna throw you <laughs> off. You have to get gas. <laughs> but didn't didn't they announce that um, that they will be both available? Yes, that's gas, not a news item. Yeah, gas and electric. Yeah, originally, at the same they time. were gonna go full blown. Uh, you know, like pull the band aid off. It's just yeah. gonna be electric. But much like the Macan. They're backing off from that and saying, "Well, you know, we're still going to offer both." Which I think in is some smart, markets, right? It's a smart so, business move, yeah. mainly because they don't have this um, charging network anywhere near figured out right now. Yeah. So, do you think the performance of the electric will be um, on paper higher performing than the gas counterpart, or do you think they will try to? Yes. They will try to keep it the same. Uh, yeah, like Damon said, it will be, and you're paying more. So it, it'll just be a driving feel, you know, it's going to be a heavier car, mm-hmm. I, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be, you know, um, do you want like a uh, neck snapping acceleration yeah. versus a heavier car? I mean, uh, you know, have you driven a Taycan, Richard? Yes. I so have. To me, the yeah. Taycan is an incredible machine mm-hmm. and yep. I don't feel that weight. It's not like you uh, feel the weight under braking. Uh, uh, I, you I mean, to me, it's not that much different than a Panamera. Um, so it'll or be interesting. Yeah. You know, it's it's not with... different from a Panamera weight wise. They're very similar. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. 
So you're talking electric versus gas in that, uh, you know. uh, So uh, there's a lot of pressure on them, I think, on this car Mm -hmm. and the launch of this car. Yeah. And I think the the expectation will be, especially when given a choice, presented a choice. It's one thing to say, okay, you have to buy an EV if you want a uh, car of this type. But to now the market is going to be able to decide which to choose. So it's going to have to be really, and, really and good. I, I think it's smart of them to do it that way to, you know, yeah. give their enthusiasts, their customers the choice. But I feel as though they already know the outcome. They're just doing it because that's the right thing yeah. to do. But the long game is it is going to be electric. And I think as a club, we need to be prepared yeah. for that. Yeah. It's interesting because we, uh, and I know not everybody on our Facebook or Instagram are members. Um, I'm sure a good chunk of those are, but uh, it's pretty crazy to see how much people dislike electric cars. It is. Still, you know, um, like the the new stuff, man, I wish it were electric and it's just like. But how many people disliked, you know, the the, the Cayenne being built. Well, remember when the turbo, everything was going turbo and everyone was like, buy the last flat. um, Well, that's the history, you know, going back to the history when the 911 was introduced, you know, oh, that's the end of Porsche. The 356 was the last real Porsche. (laughs) Or when a a liquid cooled 911, oh my God, you know, or an SUV. It's Uh, all that criticism. uh, Why Porsche is this this good nowadays, right? But I I, I think what they're looking (laughs) long range is, you know, my, my youngest uh, my son, he's he's uh, 14, and I don't think he has that gas versus electric mentality. He just likes cool cars. Yeah, he's more and agnostic so they're, they're, on yeah, the technology. Exactly. So yeah. And he doesn't have the, yeah. you know, the the exhaust note that he falls in love with. And in fact, yeah. I think my middle son, you know, some of my cars are kind of loud. And he's like, Dad, why is your car so freaking loud? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, can it be fast and be quiet at the same time? So I think you know, yeah, some yeah. of us older gearheads love that stuff but they're preparing for the next generation yeah i and think the next generation I, wants that performance but not yeah. necessarily all that well ruckus. our cars be our well cars be like phones in that the technology changes so fast that uh you know some guy looking at a 2025 boxster uh who buys one then next year it's a whole different model it's like iphones yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. i thought i was new with my iphone 11 now i got like 15 yeah. pro which means yeah by christmas it'll be 16 or something like that it's uh at what point? Um... What I like about, though, this shift of direction, though, is like I'm fine really with give me a choice. You know, mm-hmm. if, if, if I want an EV, I'll buy it, you mm-hmm. know, to convince me that it's better. Uh, and I really like that market approach rather than just being told, sorry, no more yeah. Yeah, ice and, vehicles. And, uh, and eventually yeah. the market will determine what they yeah. offer, yeah. much like we all love a manual. We yeah. all love mm-hmm. a manual, yeah. but the market has said yeah. they only need to present, a, you know, manufacture 2% or whatever yeah. it is in manual because yeah. everyone's taking, um, I'm talking about the mass market, not necessarily the Yeah, and it's market. better to, for me to have a market decision rather than some bureaucrat in Brussels or yeah. wherever deciding exactly. you know, whether yeah. I get yeah. an ice vehicle or not. Yeah. All right, your next news item, Manny. I didn't click on it, so this was FAF and Porsche and McLaren. And- yes, so FAF is uh, <clears throat> giving up on Porsche. <laughs> they're, go- they're going on McLaren. Um, it's been a tough year for the GT class mm-hmm. at, for Porsche. Um, they just uh, have not been in the headlines. They struggle for a third place. Um, it's, it's, it's FAF who won the championship before, so we got a great team, um, mm-hmm. but... Uh, it's just not uh, the car is no not, longer uh, competitive. Uh, I, I think they need more BOP adjustments. So. Mm-hmm. And even with GTD, uh, you say you have GTD Pro, which they use all the same car to GT3 R, just uh, pro drivers versus that mixture of amateur. Uh, but yeah, from both classes, they just get killed. Yeah. It's, um, no, I wish I, I mean, could write more. You're, and more you're, about in, their you're wins. in it to win it. So yeah, and they have a good partnership with McLaren. So we'll yeah. see if, the, if fortunes change or not. Mm. Mm. But they were the sole entry in GTT Pro, so hopefully someone fills that void. Yeah. All right, so let's go into events. We talked about uh, uh, seeing everyone at uh, HRE's headquarters for Unstock. That will be November 12th. Registration is open. I think display cars are just about sold out. Uh, how many spots mm. do we have left, maybe? Like a handful, if that. A handful is a good number. <laughs> yeah. yeah not, I think not maybe lying. like... Uh, I don't know, uh, 15, something like that. Yeah. Maybe. So if you're planning to uh, display your modified Porsche, don't delay and register now. 
Um, we if you've never been to HRE, it is a very cool. Man, it's a manufacturing facility. And you're it's not get, a showroom. This is yeah. where they actually make the wheel that I was fascinated by. All have you ever been there? No, I haven't. No, it's really, no, uh, it's no, really. No. Um, well, it makes me happy that manufacturing is still in the U.S. and and how precise they are, and watching how this chunk of metal comes out this beautiful uh, and how customized wheel. they are. Yeah, every it's, single wheel. Yeah. And these guys are all gearheads. Mm -hmm. To them, it's not the. It's like some come companies they could be making popcorn makers or whatever doesn't matter yeah. but these guys are pure gear gearheads and and here i'm talking about how he developed some wheels because it reminded them of a retro bmw and yeah. they copy you could tell they really really get into their work yeah it's gonna be an awesome time and um you know certainly those of you in southern california make your way down there even if you're not displaying a car we'll have plenty of parking for spectators food trucks a dj and it'll be a fun time yeah, I went last year's event. It was a great vibe. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't be with you this year, but uh, yeah, it was fun I, last I, year. I thought I saw you. You had your car registered. I did. Or something I came did. Up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, well, who, who is coming from the EC? Anyone? Uh, I think Tom is coming thought, and Craig's coming. I think Craig's coming. Craig's yeah. coming yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, still a fun time. Well, this year, last year was kind of crowded. Um, yeah. The space at West Coast Customs yeah. was kind of tight. Still a very mm -hmm. special um, event because we got to go inside West Coast Customs. And this is the mm -hmm. same here at Unstock as we'll be able to go inside the manufacturing facility and uh, see I, all I, their tools. I'm still failing the drug test here because of West Coast Customs event because we had to push that one car <laughs> oh, yeah. one car yeah. oh my god <laughs> we had to open the door up to, you know, to, so, to turn the steering so, wheel and uh oh my god let me let me clarify <laughs> i took one breath and i was like wow. let, me, not my car. let me clarify it was not one of our members cars it was not an event person's car it was a, we hope it wasn't one it, of was, our it, it was it was it was a car that was in the middle of the street they knew it belonged to um but they didn't have the keys but the car was unlocked and when man when you open the door and you got the waft of um let's say a uh, uh marijuana i mean it was it was strong yes that's uh, <laughs> that's stuck in my head about that experience yeah. i thought the dogs at the airport were it, start, I was about uh, say, it was good that we didn't need to go to the my lug my, yeah. my shirt i was wearing that day uh, oh, we'll, before before you go to the next one i uh -huh. want to uh, i should have mentioned this earlier in the show for people still listening so next podcast, we're going to talk about the uh, white collection, yeah, which is coming up for auction. Yep. And Damon, oh, yeah. Damon was actually there, and he's yeah. going to uh, tell yeah. us about filming the video for it. If you haven't watched yeah. the video, go type in white collection uh, PCA, and you'll come up with uh, it's our yep. most popular video. Um, but we have an insider who mm -hmm. is um, going to be unnamed. He wants to be anonymous, but he's going to answer a lot of our questions. So if you have any questions about this white collection, Put it in the comments, and maybe we'll throw those questions to the person. We'll do our best. Uh, we'll do our best to mm -hmm. uh, see what questions That's he can answer. But maybe a yeah. little bit of an insider uh, about, because uh, I've heard different podcasts talking about this, but none of them really have had an inside look at this or, or can speak, mm -hmm. uh, maybe to the degree we can. Um, and just a little insight into uh, into this collection, because the more you dive deeper into it, this person was very... Uh, fastidious about his collection oh, yeah. and he yeah. has a lot of um, memorabilia going oh, up for sale gosh. too it's mm -hmm. going to be quite yeah. an auction I, yeah. i'm yeah. going to be sitting at my computer that day just looking at the prices because there's yeah. some things there it's that, all an online yeah, auction yeah. so anyways i just want to say uh put any questions you have about this white collection if you haven't seen the video go look at that first because i'm sure you'll have a lot of questions after you watch it yeah and yeah. look at all the lots maybe you have a question about a particular item i think 64 cars are being sold yeah and, and the cars are amazing don't get me wrong but the memorabilia and the, oh, yeah. all the other stuff that they have in the collection you like porsche bikes porsche bikes definitely porsche watches attention. porsche yeah. uh, there was a porsche sled that i didn't even know existed yeah. uh, a lot of posters cool the Bobski. Yeah. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So it's probably not good for my hoarding tendencies, but I'm going to watch it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, following Unstock, we will stay in Southern California. Uh, the following weekend, we are going to be there for the National Tech Tactics West in Eastvale, California, uh, in the training center with Porsche. That's November 18th and 19th. And I believe registration opens up today. today yeah. So by the time Eastern. you listen to this, registration yeah. will be open. And uh, hopefully you'll join us for, um, you, you only need to sign up for one day because the, next, the following day it's the same curriculum. So hopefully yep. we'll see you. Rinse either. and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Yep. See you Saturday uh, or Sunday. Um, I do want to give a plug. Make sure if you have ever considered going on a cruise, but maybe you were kind of on the fence, 
you should come out with us because we have about 800 PCA members heading um, to Treffen at Sea uh, with uh, Princess Cruise Lines, and that's going to be sailing December 9th. There are a few rooms left. Uh, it's just about sold out. Uh, we just heard that uh, we have Pirelli coming on board as uh, mm -hmm. one of our major sponsors of Treffen at Sea, so they are going to sponsor our welcome party. Going to get a tire as a flotation device, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. <laughs> they are also going to be the presenting sponsor of the Treffen at Sea Diecast Concours. Which awesome. I think will be the we're definitely going to um, beat the record that we had last mm -hmm. year. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh -huh. And then also, if you've been following um, the dates and announcements for Porsche Parade, Porsche Parade next year will be in Birmingham, Alabama, June 9th through 16th. So um, make sure this is a great time to plug the newsletters um, because this is how you can find out what's going on in PCA. So if you haven't subscribed to eBreak News or Mark Fresh News or Performance News, just head over to PCA.org and we'll get you set up there. Uh, we are a bit over. Is there anything else we want to share? I'm glad to have you back because I do not like, I like producing it, but I like when <laughs> I can relax during the uh, show and not have to remember all these things that you have to, you remember. Yeah, well, I I love that I am back. And again, thank you to everyone who kind of took up the slack that I, I left a void when uh, going out to Rensport. Thank you for all the well wishes, the emails, the texts. Um, and I'm so proud of the PCA team for the amazing job they did at Rensport. But you know what? That's done, and we've got other things to do, and we are geared up to have a really strong finish to the year. So thanks for listening. If you aren't currently a PCA member and you own a Porsche, grab that VIN, hand o uh, hand blah, blah, head over to PCA.org, and we'll make sure we set you up with membership. If you're looking for your Porsche, we have a test drive program where we can uh, give you access to resources and help you find the best Porsche uh, you can. Uh, Porsche Club Insider, make sure you join the Instagram page, behind the scenes photos and videos. As always, we love it when you place a comment, uh, send us a message at podcast.pca.org. Uh, again, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take a look at our Instagram page. We got lots going on. Um, until next time, stay safe and we'll catch you down the road.